it is Halloween, and uh, I get to go trick-or-treating with my wife and our kids afterwards for the first time, kind of, so it's quite neat for us, and uh, even though in previous years it wasn't that meaningful to me, so it's more meaningful now, as, and then when my kids get older, maybe it'll change again, I don't know. Um, so, you know, I've, uh, I've got just a few slides, and before I get into them, I, I just want to explain a little bit what the purpose of it, and, and uh, I've got really one o over underlying theme um, for this whole thing. Uh, before I get to that, though, I, I want to reiterate the thank you for all the people that are here. Um, as I look around the room, our fourth year of doing it, there's many consistent faces, there's some new faces, and, and we, are, we are truly thankful for this because uh, if it wasn't for so many people in this room, there's just no way uh, many of us would be able to do what we do. Um, and, uh, and we do consider you part of our family uh, in many ways, and sometimes we don't agree on everything. Uh, however, uh, we're really thankful for that. A couple comments on PD. Uh, many of you are, of course, here for the exciting content of IFRS, but there's a short hand of you that are here to get your PD hours, which is wonderful. Uh, so, so some things on that, um, because as we, as we get to year end, a lot of CPAs in the room are beginning to scramble about all the PD hours they have or they don't have, and, and especially the ethics requirements, because CPAs now know you need four hours of ethics. Four hours, okay, not two, four. Uh, so if you took a two-hour course, not enough and you need that over a three-year cycle. So what we want people to always do uh, is email us because we're, we're happy to put these events together all the time because we get a great deal of value just to see you for five minutes, if anything. Uh, so if we get responses, we'd be happy to put together some ethics seminars by year end or other content. Uh, there's a number of you here that always reach out to us for that, uh, but we want to encourage more of that because we're very happy to do so. So we could put an ethics seminar together, and we've done a couple of those in previous years. Uh, so please keep reaching out to us for topics, discussions, and anything you'd like to see. Our job is to serve the community. Um, so I'd like to say that. So the market update, uh, it's, it's already been done in many ways because uh, there's been a, a significant amount of updates in the market for the last couple of years. My slides are relatively simple, and I'll explain them, and then I'll go through them. So we looked at the, at the top trading stocks uh, in various markets around the world, in particular the Canadian markets, uh, two years ago. And then we took uh, the top trading stocks from yesterday, I think, or the day before. And you're going to see some very predictable patterns there. So the stock exchanges that we looked at were the CSC, the TSXV, and the TSX main board. And it's only recently that I started learning about the NGO exchange. How many people here know about the NGO exchange? Put your hand up. Okay, well, a regulator knows that's good. Okay, I mean, so not that many people know about it, right? Um, and we didn't know much about it either, but it's considered a senior exchange, right, as opposed to a junior exchange. And we're starting to see some traction about companies listing them more and more. Uh, I don't have a view, I don't have an opinion on an exchange, and even if I did, I wouldn't share it. Um, but, uh, but it seems to be getting some traction. So just note, there is another exchange out there in Canada, it's called the NGO exchange. Uh, I didn't put any stats from there, we put the three main exchanges. Then we looked at um, some major economic forces around the world, and, and I'm going to speak about a little bit about what's going on in these countries. And, and for those of you who, whose countries we're not naming, it isn't because we are not multiculturals and, and we are levels of all countries in the world, but we did pick what we feel are the kind of economic powers uh, by region by region in the world. So no offense, my wife is Czech. Check isn't on there either, okay? So it has nothing to do with that. Um, and what we looked at is we looked at the tro top trading stocks of those individual countries. And the reason why we did that is, is we're trying to paint a picture of what's going on in the world, right? Not necessarily just from a big company scale or a small company scale, but just what are the, what are the real trends that are happening out there? I mean, without a doubt, in Canada, cannabis and crypto we're talking about, right? Um, what you're going to find, though, in a lot of these bigger markets the top trading stocks are still very traditional type of companies that you would guess. You know, oil and gas, uh, big telecom companies, or a big insurance company, other related energy companies. So as I go through these, I want you to keep kind of one word in mind, and that word is agriculture. <clears throat> and agriculture, cannabis certainly is part of that, although, you know, we're of the view that that is just the beginning because of a number of significant trends that are happening globally now by different generations. And some of those trends are, you know, we're talking about uh, Halloween candy, right, for example. I remember when I immigrated to Canada in 1988, and I went for my first Halloween, and I got a bunch of candy, and I was so excited, and, you know, I ate it all, and my mom, and all those things, right? And, and, and getting that candy from that neighbor was just so good to get. 
Now, you know, it's still cool because the kids don't know what's going on. But we know that you go to Costco and you buy that bag and it's only costing about five bucks and you got a ton of candy there, right? It's not that hard to find candy, okay? It's not that hard to find alcohol either these days. And frankly, in this world, it ain't that hard to find food either. So the world isn't as hungry as it used to be. And if you look at the poverty, you know what I mean, in, in, in ration of, of Africa, most people are eating food. We're eating way too much food, right, in North America and the Western world. And so we don't see a big shortage of food as being the big problem going forward. But we might see a big shortage of quality food going forward. Uh, you've seen the tomatoes in Costco, right? Like you've seen the asparagus, you know, you've seen the chickens, right? You've seen the size of it all. Um, every party that I've gone to or things and there's food you know like there's food around we're eating it's available but what about the organic food um you know that broccoli at choices is five bucks or eight bucks i don't know and that broccoli at costco is a dollar so uh you know the um you know growing whether it's cannabis and cannabis by the way is not the only plant out there Okay, there's lots of plants out there for medicinal purposes. And so, you know, I personally think it's just the beginning of the trend of, of agriculture. So, you know, there's a fight for land globally. Um, as, as, as a wise person told us once in our life, uh, you can't make more land, right? Um, you can make a lot of other things, but you can't make more land. Herbal land, where can you grow things in the world versus where you can't? Uh, can you grow things inside versus outside? Of course, there's the whole movement of synthetic foods. Uh, there's also synthetic cannabis now that's being thought about. So there seems to be this huge forces uh, globally that are beginning to shift um, in terms of traditional companies. And the other side, of course, is technology uh, related to artificial intelligence. And there's an incredible amount of talk about that's how that's going to change our life significantly too. Although most people, unless you're really in the game, don't really know it yet. It's really difficult to explain or well that it's self-driving cars or um, Siri to tell me which direction I'm going to drive and whatever other AI applications are come about in this life, uh, th that's part of it too. Uh, but, but health and the trends of fitness and, and, and all that, to me all has to do with agriculture. And technology is related to that. So if it's plant-based protein, or if you're eating crickets and, 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 and other insects that are going to supply other natural proteins for our life, there, there, there's a lot of products and, and the new generation wanting that, and they're willing to pay a premium for it, okay? For those of you who hang out at Whole Foods, there's lineups out the door, and, and, and people are willing to pay more for that. And so, you know, my view and some of our view from a market update is that the global trend is going to begin heading in those directions. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, AI or technology to, to mesh with that together. While everybody talks about organic food and, you know, this and that, technology will play a huge role in that too, even if it's organic food. I mean, as an analogy, you can call that the religion science uh, cohesiveness together where organics and technology can mesh and, and make a better world. So, so let me get to some of these slides, and, and don't worry too much about reading that. Just maybe look at the pie charts. So this is October 30th, and that's just yesterday. So look at the pie charts because it just summarizes the thing there. Cannabis clearly makes up 50% of the most active companies in the CSE. Pharmaceuticals, 30. Um, the, the, the industry that, that most of us have been involved in for a really, really long time and was the bread of our life is only 10%, right? So quite small. Now, fast forward um, two years ago, the trend isn't actually as different as I expected, admittedly, because cannabis was actually pretty active two years ago on the CSC, pharmaceuticals as well. Mining was a little bit more, right? So there's a little bit of a trend of mining going down and then going up. But the CSC didn't shock me uh, because the CSC uh, from the beginning was uh, an exchange that accepted emerging markets even two years ago. And so the trend there wasn't as dramatic as other types of industry. Um, now let's look at a different stock exchange. And now this is the TSX main board, okay, not the venture, but the main exchange in Toronto. Look at cannabis. 40% of yesterday's trading, trading activity had to do with cannabis, right? So whether it's the CSC, okay, or the TSX, it's, it's the word of the day. Uh, mining still made up a good chunk, right? Without a doubt, you know, 
I'm a lover of mining and I always will be. And, and like many in the room, we're waiting for that cycle to turn around. And it will turn around, okay? It will. Um, when is the big picture? Maybe once attention gets averted from these emerging markets into good old mining, that will make a change. Uh, so I certainly would not discount our, our, our loving industry of mining. Uh, oil and gas, of course, still makes up an insurance. So look at that. Memorize that for a moment. And then look at two years ago. What don't you see in there? Well, you certainly don't see cannabis. Uh, you're going to see that you know 90%, okay, 9-0 of the market had to do with commodities, traditional oil and gas, mining, and precious metals. Now let, let's look at the next stock exchange, which of course is our beloved uh, TSX Venture. Whoo, you know what I mean? 60%, right? So yesterday's trading volume, 60% of the trading volumes, the TSXV, had to do with cannabis. And the TSXV is not accepting U.S. issuers, okay? They're only accepting Canadian issuers. Um, and so you can see that trend. And then look two years ago, and you're going to see mining, cannabis. Mining, cannabis. Well, you know, the two industries can also mesh together, right? So for those in the crowd who have been in mining for a really, really long time, and, and are beginning to wonder whether or not you'll shift into a new industry, what you quickly want to realize is there's similarities, okay? Logistics, transportation, licenses, okay? <laughs> licenses are really important in both of these. So they're different, but they're not that different. And so for many of the accountants in the room, you know, I, I would be of the view that you could actually have a relatively natural shift uh, between the two industry. There's a bit of a learning curve, but, but you can get there. Um, so that's the TSXV. So, so those are sort of the trends. And I don't know if anybody in this room, and if you did, uh, maybe you can give me some tips, okay? But uh, who could have predicted that, right? Um, that two years ago, the main markets in this country, the active stocks are significantly different than the main stocks of today's world. So let's look at the rest of the world now for a moment, if we could. So here's the countries I picked, right? By, by no, uh, by, we did try to focus on you know, every region of the world, if you may. And, and again, we did a similar exercise about where the trading volumes and what type of companies are really listing in these, in these places. So Canada, we went through that. Um, here are the actual names of the companies uh, without getting into all the industries, but we spoke about that. The United States. The United States economy is booming, okay? It's booming on all fronts. How long it will last, I don't know. A lot of people are talking about a recession, market correction, tenure of a bull run. Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, I, I am actually with a personal view that this will become the greatest wealth period for the United States, right? Without giving any political views, economically, the U.S. economy is booming right now. It's got the lowest employment rates, maybe in the history. So for us here in Canada, what does that mean? Uh, we're starting to see an uptick in U.S. listings. We're starting to see an uptick in registration statements, like 20Fs and 40Fs and 10Ks. And so there's, there's a lot of cash sitting in the United States, and, and a lot of that cash will start moving up here. These new emerging markets are really important for the U.S. Uh, because Canada enables a lot of companies to list here. And so and there's always been, you know, let me get back to agriculture for a second, right? Um, the, you know, the, the most sticking point in the NAFTA thing was the dairy farmers, right? The milk. And, and all of us know that that industry isn't that big relative to all the trade we do with the U.S. But, you know, you, I question myself, why was that such a sticking point? And you could have your views on it. I think the agriculture industry is just really getting protected right now because the view is it's a very, very important going forward industry for the, for the global economy. So the American companies, and, and I've got the Amex there, which has historically always been more of a natural resources, um, medicinal type of exchange. The NASDAQ has always been technology. Um, and then NYC, of course, had all the, the, the big, big companies, right, like the Dow 30 and so forth. And without uh, going into what every company does, um, what you'll see is that the United States is actually relatively diversified. They got natural resources, they got medical products company, they got technology companies, they got investment companies, uh, they've got ETFs. And so similar to a lot of things in the United States, it's a very, very diversified country. And so for them, uh, agriculture uh, it does not show up on these items. And yet it certainly is a big conversation in the US. My expectation is that if you'd look at these charts going forward, uh, we would begin to see more of these type of companies. You know, the other thing is the, the generation now, you know, 
they like to, you want to invest in companies that are doing the right thing for the environment, uh, the right thing for the world. And so, you know, we believe investment dollars will start to trickle in to the companies that demonstrate um, how they're trying to make this world a better place without sounding too cheesy. Uh, and so we think that's important. Uh, but the United States, by and large, is quite diversified. Colombia. Colombia has, um, you know, been quite a performing country in the last 20 years. Uh, Brazil and Argentina have always been traditional big players in South America, but Colombia has stepped it up. And, and Colombia has cannabis deals in it. Uh, it's got a lot of natural resources. And so we believe that the deal flow from Colombia uh, will remain robust. The when part is always difficult to assess because there's political environments uh, to deal with and other, other things. But the economy is quite diverse. And in terms of agriculture, uh, you know, we think Colombia has, ha has a long history of having expertise there. Germany, as expected, you know, you'll recognize some of these companies, Lufthansa, uh, Deutsche Bank, Telekom, right, banks. And so we found that, we found that Germany to be quite well mixed. Um, they are going to excel in technology as it relates to agriculture rather than being the main agriculture producer uh, as they have in many emerging industries. And so Germany, we found to be a quite diverse um, market economy from that perspective. And we think that agricultural type of companies will be on the exchange, but more so from a technology mix. Russia. Russia is not diversified. Okay, the biggest companies on the on the stock exchange are electrical utilities and banks. And, and you know, when we're talking about the crypto world and cryptocurrency and, and things like that, and where that market will head, while it's taking a bit of a backseat now because it's it, it you know bitcoins crashed and all the things you've heard uh, one must understand that a lot of that is coming from that part of the world um, whether it's russia or china or other asian countries and so north america while it being hesitant and not understanding of the industry and thinking it's going to crash tomorrow morning i don't tend to agree okay i, I think there's going to be a lull and I think cryptos are here to remain. Uh, the accounting for it and so forth is very confusing, uh, but we don't think it's going away. It, it's, it might come out in different form, just like the internet. The internet crashed and we all thought it was dead. It's not. And so crypto is another one where currency globally uh, is getting affected by those forces. And, and so we can see a lot of deal flow f coming from that part of the world uh, in that space. China. So, you know, there hasn't been that many stories out of China lately, economically wise. Uh, we used to sit around a TV and hear about how GDP is growing by 9% every quarter and all those types of stories. And now you don't hear that as much. Uh, although I think their latest forecast is still somewhere in the 5 to 6% annually. So it's still pretty good. Uh, but nevertheless, they're dominated by, by the type of, of public companies that have to do with um, financial services, investment, and retail. They're not very well diversified. We think from an agriculture point of view, China will rise. We really do. Um, agriculture has been embedded in the Chinese economy for centuries and centuries and centuries. And if you want to talk about cannabis, uh, you know, we believe things will start coming out of there too, uh, once the realization of the market can be assessed. So China in itself uh, is not a well diversified necessarily stock market at this stage. South Africa, I found to be the most diversified. South Africa is not a big, big economy relative to China and Russia and the US, uh, but we think the South Africans have kind of got it right because their economy or their markets is very well diversified. Uh, they have food processing companies, they got banks, they got mining, they've got real estate assets and all sorts of other diversified investments. The political climate's tough in South Africa and other external factors, uh, but nevertheless, as a country, in terms of being a, a mover in the agriculture space, uh, we think they'll be a leader. Last but not least is Australia, which also has certain cannabis programs in play, but they're not quite up to speed quite like Canada. Um, pretty diversified economy, uh, quite a bit of mining and oil and gas still in those economies. And, and so agriculture, just like Canada, should be a leader. I, I really resonate with Mike's comment about um, Canada probably being the standard setting for, um, for cannabis. 
IAS 41, okay, that's agriculture. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not applicable, okay? They wrote that a long time ago, okay? Well, Ian, you tell me, do you think the accounting for a pumpkin should be the same as the accounting for a tree? I mean, do you think the accounting for cannabis should be the same as growing grapes? I don't, okay? I mean, I don't think a pumpkin is the same thing as a tree. I don't think cannabis is the same thing as a grape. And I don't think eating crickets is the same thing. You know, so the, the point is, is that the, the, the accounting standards have not contemplated these types of things. And so as a result of that, there's catch up. And, it, and it's not a mistake, okay? It's just it didn't contemplate it at the time. We must be the standard setters because all the deal flow that I just described in these countries where they don't have agriculture as the primary base of public markets, that money will come to Canada, okay? Because <laughs> right? we're willing. We're willing to accept these companies and we're willing to accept these industries and we're willing to let them list on our exchanges because we're a liberal country, we're open-minded and we're great diplomats. And so as a result of that, we see that flow coming here, okay? And, and, and agriculture companies, it's unlikely you're going to see the biggest agriculture company be the top trading stock in China or the top trading stock in Russia over the next five to ten years. But they also know that that's what's going to create a lot of future value. So that capital will come to Canada, it'll come to Vancouver, and we need to be the leaders, just like we were with mining. You know, some of the greatest discoveries in mining occurred with its roots in beautiful downtown Vancouver. And we believe the same thing is going to happen in the crypto world and in the cannabis world. So it's an exciting time. It's a very risky time and it's a very stressful time. So be careful. Be careful. Because it's not simple, all this stuff, whether it's the accounting for it or, or the auditing it. Um, be careful. Uh, talk to your regulators. They're, they're open for discussion. Um, they, they're learning just like we are. And so as a collaborative group, um, I think it's, it's an exciting time for, for the public markets here in Canada. Um, so that's all I had to say. Thanks for your time and thanks for your patience and listening to me. Thank you.